Hey guys and welcome to my French Civ Overview. In this video I'll be going over the unique units and technologies for this French civilization, as well as the unique and team cards, and then showing off some gameplay to give you an idea of what to expect uh, generally when playing this civilization. So let's begin with the civilization bonus up here. Begins with the native scout, trains courier de bois instead of settlers. So pretty straightforward um, in terms of the native scout, you'll just get an extra scout at the beginning of the game, um, help you scout out the map. Um, the unique thing is instead of villagers, they'll get these courier de bois, which cost 120 food. Um, and so they're basically a more expensive villager, but more powerful and who gathers faster. So just trading off, uh, you know, being more expensive or being an overall better villager. And they also save population space, so you can have more military. So you can have, you know, 80 courier de boy instead of, you know, 120 settlers. So you can have a, a much larger military in the late game. Um, so the couriers have a 1.25x uh, gather speed, and they have a stronger attack and hit points. Uh, but as I said, you know, they're more expensive. So pretty unique um, playing the French. It, it means every villager is more important than with a lot of you know any other civilization. So you really have to make sure that you're keeping them safe. If if you know if you lose one villager, uh, that's already really bad. But you know it's a lot harder to lose villagers if you're just being a little bit careful. Uh, so with that, next we have the Royal Guard units. Uh, so we have uh, first the skirmishers, which I was just looking here and wondering why the skirmisher isn't showing up from the fortress uh, but anyways it's over here in the barracks um so they get volt they're called voltigers um i guess it's pronounced vol voltigers i'm not sure um but yeah basically they get a very strong uh, skirmisher unit which is basically you know their anti-infantry um or anti-heavy infantry unit i guess and that pairs very well with the next unique unit um which is basically, you know, an anti cat well, pretty much an anti-everything unit, if we're being totally honest. I think anyone who's played French or played against French or just knows a little bit about this game uh, knows of the infamy of the cuirassiers or the gendarmes. Uh, so these are their unique cavalry units. So they're heavy cavalry with a trample attack. So this means they do uh, AoE damage, so basically a slash attack in a small area around where their initial attack was. So these are an extremely powerful, high hit point, high attack damage cavalry unit. Um, fairly slow, but not you know not terribly slow, but I think fairly slow compared to some other cavalry units. Um, and they resist 20% uh, of range damage. So overall, um, you know this unit. There's not anything that counters it super hard. Obviously, it's pretty expensive to make. Um, you know, but if you make halberdiers or something, they might you know, be more cost effective, but you know, you're not going to win the engagement still. Um, so this unit is pretty infamous for just being incredibly powerful. You know, if a French gets the late game and they're just spamming these Karassiers out, you know, there's probably not going to be anything you can do. And if they get into your economy, well, you might as well just resign right then. Um, so yeah, it's the Royal Guard unit is also their unique unit, which we just went over. And we also went over the Courier de Bois, which is their settler unit. Um, yeah, so they don't actually have a lot of like unique units or anything, you know, we'll get to this in the gameplay section too, but, you know, the French in general are, are just a very basic, kind of straightforward civilization, um, very few options, but very good options, you know, all you really need to do is build the skirmishers and the cuirassier, um, and everyone knows you're going to do that, but... Um, even though everyone knows you're going to do that, it's still a very powerful combination late game. And, and if you get to the point where you are that into the late game, um, you're probably still going to win. So a very straightforward, I would say noob friendly, um, but a very powerful Civ if they're able to get into the late game. So you definitely want to be harassing their economy and trying not to let them get too, too many of these Karassier up and trying to pick them off when you can. Because if they have a mass of them, then you're pretty much toast. Uh, so with the unique units out of the way, let's check out the unique uh, monastery upgrades here. Um, let me just find that. Here we go. Uh, so they basically get... Well, let me go over this one first. So they get Code Napoleon, which is an interesting one. Um, and it basically you gather... Um, progressive law causes your villagers to gather all resources more quickly. However, the additional bureaucracy increases building cost. So this one's kind of an interesting trade-off. All your buildings cost more, but you gather everything faster. You know, 
I don't know that this is really that good. It could be useful in the late game if you've already pretty much built all your buildings and you just want a little bit more economy at that point. Um, but I'm not a big fan of the trade-off. I mean, it's, it's not great, honestly, especially in the earlier game and you still want to build a lot of stuff. But up to you if you want to go with that or not. Um, and then all the other ones are kind of around grenade, grenadier shipments. So we have, you know, Imperial Young Guard ships four Young Guard Grenadiers. Um, and then we have Imperial Middle Guard ships eight Middle Guard Grenadiers. And then we have Imperial Old Guard ships 15 Old Guard Grenadiers. Um, and it also sets Incendiary Grenade status to active for these Imperial ones. Um, and it also uh, looks like it increases Grenadier action, uh, you know, basically damage and hit points by 10% overall. Um, so, you know, th this could be useful if you're looking for some extra anti-infantry units um, or just destroying buildings later on. Uh, but I would say overall they're unique monster upgrades. I mean, I, I don't really think they're necessary, honestly. I mean, if you're gonna, you might as well just go for Carassiers anyways, and, you know, they'll be better than the Grenadiers regardless for, for either, you know, anti-infantry or, uh, you know, raiding, destroying buildings. So... You know, I don't know. It's up to you if you want to get some Grenadiers out. But if you're, you know, wondering if you should uh, prioritize these unique church upgrades, I would say probably not. As the French doesn't seem too important to me. And then lastly, uh, since they're a European civilization, they have their revolt option. And the French can revolt into uh, Haiti, the United States, or Canada. So with that out of the way, I think that's all the unique technologies and um, units for the French. And with that, let's go ahead and check out the unique and team cards for the French so you can see what kind of decks you're going to be building. So now on to the French unique cards. So go ahead and starting it off in the Exploration Age, uh, we have Northwest Passage. Your couriers or your villagers get uh, move faster and do more damage to treasure guardians. So if you want to, you know, go for a lot of those early treasures, uh, you could pull off some infantry from your resources and take this card and try to get some treasure. Um, I don't know that this is really worth it. You'd have to really make sure you get a lot of good treasures to actually, you know, make it worth pulling your couriers off of, you know, re gathering resources. Um, but you know, it could be a fun playstyle if you really want to, you know, focus on gathering treasure. Um, one game. And then we have a few different uh, trickle rate. Uh, ones or you know just resource cards around kind of late game options for French or you know like treaty game options for French in general. Um, so these are pretty good. So first we have Colbertism, rest of your game is small trickle of food, so you get a 1.5 food trickle rate. Uh, and then we also have a 1.25 wood trickle rate from distributivism. Uh, so both you know late game cards, you'll, these will be good for you know the whole game if you want to start, start off with those. Uh, and then we have an interesting one, fur trade. So when the shipment arrives, all of your current food is exchanged for a greater amount of coin. So I've seen some people use this in treaty games where they just focus only on food and then, you know, right before the treaty period ends, they convert it all into coin and they just have like a massive coin stockpile. Um, so there's probably some interesting strategies you could do with this. Um, so maybe in a treaty game or a late game where you want to focus on all on food for a long time and then switch it to gold later, uh, consider taking this card. Then we have Voyager, improves your French Explorer in combat, allows him to heal units, and gives him a powerful canine companion. This is, you know, pretty good all around. I wouldn't say it's priority, but it's a pretty decent card in general. Just to make your Explorer a little bit better, um, you know, now he can heal units and gives him a canine companion. So, it, I don't know, it's not amazing. If there's not really any other card for you to take, or you really need some treasures, then go for this, but... Otherwise, if you know if it's a team game and you really want to focus on resource gathering and your units, then I probably wouldn't take this. Uh, next, we have long range infantry hit points. So crossbowmen and skirmisher hit points increased. Uh, pretty good since you'll be you know building skirmishers pretty much every game. And then hand cavalry hit points. Similarly, um, you know upgrading your crossy hit points by fifteen percent. Um, always going to be good since you're going to be you know pretty much always trying to build crossies at some point. Then we have Wilderness Warfare, Courier, Skirmisher, and Native Warrior hit points increased. Uh, you know, another good one. Again, this stacks with the other one, so your Skirmishers are going to get pretty tanky if you take this. And um, Long Range Infantry hit points, so that's 15% plus, you know, 20%. So you're talking uh, 35% with both of these. Plus your uh, Villagers are upgraded, and, you know, if you have Native Warriors, uh, those can be upgraded. So this could be a pretty good one to take as well. Uh, next we have... Uh, 
Tiralures, I'm not sure how to say that. All your crossbowmen, transforms, and skirmishers. Um, this one is actually pretty interesting um, because a lot of times, you know, you'll be going fast fortress with French, but you also might, you know, need to defend a rush or something, maybe from the Ottomans or the Russians. So if you're building crossbowmen at that time to defend that, you know, maybe you have like 15 crossbowmen, get to the fortress age, uh, well now you can just automatically upgrade these to skirmishers. Um, so in a situation where you're defending an early rush, but you want to, uh, you know, turn that into something something good or better for the, the mid game, um, consider taking this card. Um, it's hard to say if it's better than some of these other cards. I think in that kind of situation it would be, you know, if you have something like 15 crossbowmen that you had to defend with, and now, you know, you've beaten back your opponent and now you want to go on a counterattack. Well, you send this card and instead of getting, you know, eight new skirmishers, well, you just got, you know, 15 skirmishers instead of your 15 crossbowmen. So you can go for a pretty strong push with that. Um, but yeah, in the same line of reasoning um, with the fact that, you know, usually as French, you'll be going for a fast fortress, if not a fast industrial. Um, here are just some general, you know, unit cards that could be useful to take depending on the situation. So you might want eight skirmishers, you know, three Carassier for raiding, um, five Dragoons uh, if they have Cav, um, or, you know, maybe some Mercenaries if you have extra gold and you just want some really strong units to put out there. Um, so all good. If you're going for Fast Fortress Age, just depends on the situation. Uh, then we have Cavalry Combat. So similarly to this one, um, all Cavalry attack and hit points increased. Again, you know, good one to take since you're going to be always getting Carassiers pretty much. And then lastly, in the Industrial Age, um, you know, we have this uh, infinite four Crassier shipment, which um, if you have space, you know, might might as well take it, I guess. Um, definitely not priority over like factories and stuff, obviously, but just a good one to have if, you know, if you go really into the late game and you just want to keep pumping these out and maybe your economy has got weakened by that point or something, could be useful or, you know, maybe just take the mercenary cards instead. This could be more powerful. It's really up to you in that case. Um, and then we have uh, this amazing upgrade here, Thoroughbreds. So it decreases courier cost, uh, food cost by 15%, and coin cost by 15%. Uh, this is a very crucial card for late game Karasia production. Always take this card for any game that you expect to go into the late game, which is, you know, most of them as French, I would expect. Um, this is just, you know, amazing card. It reduces it from 150 food and 150 uh, coin to, uh, I don't know, the the math on top of my head, I guess it would be like 135 food and coin or something like that. Um, yeah, definitely a good card. Always take this if you're running a late game building crossiers. And then lastly, we have a group group of all system. Falcon at heavy cannon, culvert, and horse artillery damage increased. Um, so this is pretty good. If you plan on building all artillery alongside your skirmisher and crossier combination, um, I would say this is more of like a late game card, so maybe if you're like pumping out those heavy cannons from your factories and you just you just need a little extra damage or something, or you have some falconets, horse artillery, whatever you whatever you have, you know, just gives them a little bit extra damage at that point. So I think definitely a worthwhile card to take if you're planning on building artillery in the late game and not just carassiers. Um but you know, it's up to you and kind of your playstyle. But yeah, I think overall, um, you know, there's not too many unique cards uh, for the French. A um, couple critical ones like Thoroughbreds and some trickle rate ones that can be pretty good for a trade could be a really interesting card. But overall, you know, as is uh, typical for French, everything's pretty straightforward. Um, you shouldn't have any trouble fitting a lot of, you know, any critical cards into your deck, as you can see. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to their team cards. So first we have Team Early Skirmishers. So Team Skirmishers, Casadors, Wakina Rifles, Forest Prowlers, and the Imperial and Territorial Armies can be trained in the Commerce Age. Uh, for Russia, British, Aztec, Indian, Japanese, and Inca Isles, it makes Shalettes, Longbowmen, uh, Slingers, Gurkhas, Yumi Archers, and Jungle Bowmen train slightly faster. Okay, so that's a lot. Um, this one, if you're, I would say if you're going for a rush, or if you just really want to support your allies who are going for a rush, you know, like the Strelets or Longbowmen, you know, not really for the rest for Longbowmen, but just in general. I would say mainly if you're trying to support your team's rush, I would take this. Or if you're trying to do some weird early skirmisher rush, which probably wouldn't be that good, then you could take this. But overall, probably not going to be taking this into most games. 
Next we have Team Sawmills. Team Villagers gather all wood faster. Um, it also increases the gather yield slightly. Um, so definitely a good card overall. I think the only problem is it's pretty nerfed from you know, the typical single version of it where I think it's like 20% and 15% yield. So it's, it's pretty watered down. I would say if you're worried about a game going extremely into the late game and you're going to run out of wood, then maybe you could take this. But generally, I don't really take it because I think even then, you know, you have your two factories, just, just make wood from them. You know, I, you, you might run out of wood, but at that point, your Karasiyas should be able to carry you anyways. So you probably shouldn't need wood at that point. So... I don't really think this is worth taking just because, you know, you're, you're not going to need wood once you get to that agent or pumping out Karasias. You should just need, you know, Karasias and Skirmishers at that point. Uh, then we have, you know, obviously Team Coastal Defenses if you're on a naval map, Team Two Surgeons if you want that. Uh, and then we have Team Hand Cavalry Combat. Um, so like we talked about earlier, um, this would be another good one to take to stack with your other cavalry cards. Just increase your uh, cavalry combat even more. Um, then we have Team Improved Native Warriors, um, same kind of idea, but with Native Warriors, I would, I would consider, you know, if you're playing in a team game, I would almost always take Team Hand Cavalry Combat, just because it stacks with all the other cavalry upgrades, which is nice. Uh, this one, probably not so much. Uh, then you have Team Cheap Church, another one, you know, I just, it's nice, I guess, makes things cheaper, but... I just don't think this is impactful enough to even consider this one. And then lastly, we have Team Ranged Infantry Attack. Team Ranged Infantry Attack increased by 15%. So I think out of all these, I would definitely recommend Team Hand Cavalry Attack and Team Ranged Infantry Attack, just because it stacks with your normal, you know, Crassier Hand Infantry Attack cards and Skirmisher uh, Attack cards. So getting even more upgrades to your main units. And maybe, uh, you know, team early skirmishes if you want to go for some weird build or just support your allies. But yeah, those are all the team and unique cards with the French. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and hop into some gameplay so you guys can see uh, how the civilization plays overall. So now into the gameplay. So in this game, I was playing at 4v4, and I ended up just moving straight up to the Industrial Age and pumping out fully upgraded Carassiers and Skirmishers. And this is really where the French shine. So in team games, treaty games, or just any games that go far into the late game, just because those late game French Carrossier are just so deadly at that point in the game when, when massed. I would say more generally, I think French is just a pretty decent civ all the way from the early until the late game, but then especially powerful late game, specifically because of that Carrossier and Skirmisher combination. It's a good civ for beginners also, as they're pretty straightforward, they don't have a ton of unique units, and they have strong villagers to survive early raiding. Although if you do end up losing villagers, it will be more impactful than other civs since they are more expensive. You'll almost always be going fast fortress or fast industrial with the French, just so you can get access to these strong French unique units in the Carassier. Uh, especially in team games, although it is possible to do a decent musketeer rush if you think you can catch your opponents off guard. And then that's pretty much it for France. Um, as I said, there's not too much to go over with them. I think they're pretty straightforward Civ, and they're pretty good all around, uh, but I wouldn't say they're amazing at any one particular strategy, aside from just you know surviving into the late game as much as they can. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see more of my Civ overviews, and then I'll see you next time. Je le ferai. Oui, maçon. Bonjour. Correct. Maçon. Votre... Je le ferai. Très bien. Oui. Maçon. Oui. Bonjour, prêt, je le ferai. Bûche, bûcheron.
Très bien. Oui. Oui. Très bien. Je le... Oui. Votre ordre Très bien. À l'attaque Bonjour. Bonjour. Oui, maçon, votre ordre Oui, correct. Oui Oui. Très bien. Je le ferai. Oui. Votre ordre Oui. Maçon, 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 maçon. Maçon, 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 oui. Bûcheron. Bonjour. Bûcheron. Bûche, oui. Votre ordre. Prêt. Bu, votre ordre. Taya, mec, Je le ferai. Adesh. Oui, voilà bien. Mais mais comme Votre ordre Oui, ouais, je le ferai. Très bien. Oui, oui. Prêt. Je très bien. Votre ordre Je le ferai. Taya, mais Karunga. Oui, oui, très bien. Votre je le ferai. Très bien. Je le ferai. Oui. Très bien. Je oui, je le je le ferai. Chargé. Oui. Prêt. Oui. Chargé. ferai. Très bien. Oui. Très bien. Je le ferai. Oui. Très bien. Je le ferai. Très bien. Je le ferai. Oui. Très bien. Oui. Je le ferai. Oui. Très bien. Yeah. 